Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about why lotteries are bad. I've been wanting to make this video for some time. I, uh, when my parents came to the US, they were extremely poor. So this idea of a lottery was very appealing to them. And it appeals to people in, and all their friends play the lotteries and um, everyone that we grew up played the lottery. And the lottery system is meant to, there's, a few winners uh, in the sense of you know the mega jackpot millions is one main winner but it can be split but there's one kind of prize and most of the people lose and the majority of the people lose the money and it targets a specific demographic and the reason I know this is because I went to NYU and took a class on social economic policy and one of uh, it was a law class so it was a at the NYU Law School, which is one of the best law schools in the nation. And it was top. So as an undergrad, I took that class and one of the issues we had to talk about was lotteries. And it used to be a long time ago, lotteries were uh, looked frowned down upon and it was like, oh wow, you know, lotteries are a way to tax the poor, which I totally think it is. So what happens is in certain states, I forget which one, but we had a case study of it. Um, in one particular state, people spend you know 10 to 40 percent of their income on lotteries, and this sounds ridiculous. Just like different types of demographics, and it sounds ridiculous to say that, but wow! Like to spend all of that income on something that you can almost never win, but to have this giant hope and this huge number, half a billion dollars, 400 million dollars, and they can never win it because. The lottery has to make money. It is a mission. Did you know lotteries pay for marketing? When you see a lottery on TV or when there's a billboard, it's not out of the goodness of their heart that the billboard owner has given the lottery, you know, oh wow, that's awesome. We'll give you this uh, lottery space because we really enjoy, you know, giving free product to uh, people who help the community. No, they pay for the advertising. They spend a lot of money advertising on TV, on radio. And they can advertise the mega jackpot million or something like uh, scratch off tickets, which oh, I always hear that on the radio. And it really targets people with a less um, less educated people, people who are not able to control themselves or financially budget. And so it's the people who can afford at least to spend money on a lottery ticket do so. And this is documented. You can go through you know any of these. You can go through any uh, documentation and it will tell you the same results or any data sets. So now let's get to Wizard of Coast and Magic Gathering. Yes, Standard is gonna be a lot cheaper. Battle for Zendikar, the entire set is $28. You can buy a playset of Battle for Zendikar probably online on eBay for $100. Entire playset of a set of Battle for Zendikar minus Expeditions, obviously, non-foil, for $100, maybe $110 shipped to you. And that to me is insane. But you might say, oh, players will win. But someone has to open the packs and guess who opens the packs? It's the players. Whenever you get a prize, the prize is $4, which is a pack. But if that pack like that for Zenicar is only worth 76 cents after you open it, that is a terrible, terrible prize to open. It's a terrible prize to receive. And you might say, oh, well, no one should just open packs. That's not how it works. I open packs. I know opening packs is bad. You guys see me, me open packs on the channel. I know that's bad. We are patrons to open packs. They know it's bad. Like every, there's not a single person who I need to go over this that obviously it's cheaper and more reliable to buy singles. Almost every time, if not every single time. So when you, you have a loser in this scenario, there has to be a loser. That's how the lottery works. There are a few winners, and in this winner, in this scenario, the winner is easily identifiable as the person who opens a masterpiece, invents an expedition, whatever. The loser is everyone else who opens packs that doesn't get it. Right? That's how the lottery system works. And the large majority of people opening packs will not open that masterpiece. And even at the distribution level, 
if they were to crack, if they were to want to crack packs at the distribution level, it would be exceedingly difficult to make back your money because you're not sure what masterpiece you're going to get. Are you going to get the $200 one or are you going to get the one that's like $37 right now? Which is hang a back walker actually. I, that's an interesting speculation on its own. However, it really does come down to, uh, in the lottery system, there are very few winners and there's very few, there's a lot of losers. The losers are supplementing the winners. Otherwise, it doesn't, you can't have a lottery. It, it doesn't work. And Magic the Gathering has become a lottery and it will continue to be a lottery. I don't agree with it because it puts players and who, it puts the players who have less of a um, finance, who cannot budget themselves, which tend to be players uh, who have more financially difficult situations and a tougher situation, right? And we've all seen players who, instead of paying rent, they buy packs to try to get value. It never happens, but at, at least, you know, at Conjutark here, there's five cards, four, five fetch lands, $20 a piece. You can probably trade it to your store for uh, $9, $10 in cash if your store is very generous. In this set, in Kaladas, in um, Battle for Zendikar, it's Expedition or Bust, but Expedition is so uncommon, it's so mythic, super mythic, that it just doesn't make sense most of the time to open a pack, especially if you're going to take prize packs. In no case scenario, if you have prize packs or store credit, should you take prize packs for Kaladas? And definitely not for Battle for Zendikar. Anyway, bye guys.